Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we did see uh, some Villa this morning, or well, this morning for us in the EU Pro League, of yes. course. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we, we really haven't seen it much from uh, you know the international, well, Southeast or well, Asian teams, I should say. And it's time to get straight into the match. Orglis's map pick, Mantis up one map with a nice win on border. Last chance for Orglis to qualify for the six invitational rests here on Villa. Do you reckon they're going to get man back? No. Glass. Yeah, well, I mean, Ema Rin's been playing it. I don't think it's been that successful, but he has been, like, playing it a bunch. It really feels like all the bands that Mantis are coming up with are target bands against Ema Rin. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Is that perhaps the uh, player they're most scared of? But then Maybe. we're going to see Orglis with a ban on Monty. Yeah, I mean... Remember what I said before about how on Coastline, Ethan was telling me one time you should see how Mantis used Monty on Coastline. And then last time we saw Mantis play at a LAN, it was at the uh, Season 8 APAC Finals, and they did play a ton of Monty there. Um, and it was banned a ton against them by Xavier as well. So, I mean, nice, sensible ban there. The Mira is fairly staple ban. I mean, it was banned, it was banned in half of Auglis's matches by them last season. And the Valkyrie once again banned as well by Auglis. So same defense bands. Yes, true. But I'm sorry. I think I got it the wrong way around. It's actually a um, last round. It was Mantis who banned Mira. Yeah, they did it the other uh, yeah, way around. They did it yeah. the other way around. But yes, indeed. And look at that. The Jackal coming out straight off the bat with such a large map to be played here as Villa. I, I personally think Jackal is a really great way to, to speed up that roam clear and locate the enemy players. Of course, Nova once again going to uh, switch over to the Echo. We've seen him play Echo so much. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, you don't typically see your Ash yeah, player also be an Echo player. Yeah, but you kind of always see your Ash player also be a Rook player. Like, it's the thought of, you know, ACOG and Gum with not too much recoil or at least easy to control recoil. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I can see to that. And on top of that, if you've got a player who's good at communicating, then the Echoes really works with that. Because, I mean, in contrast, we've got Silex on August, who's the, the dedicated Echo player. He's not a fragger. That's not a yeah. bad thing. He is he is an incredible communicator, and that's where he uses uh, Echo to the fullest. Yeah, for sure. Well, we are... Um just Ten about to finish up to this go. prep phase, of course, going for the um, this is what aviation. Kicks, yeah, yeah. This is what oh, kicks calls it AVG. Left. I like it. AVG. Aviator, aviator in vault, games room. Game room. Just, just aviator covered. games room. Yeah, but I mean, the, the V could be like the aviator vault, vault games. Like, yeah, it's like when you <laughs> when you look at it from like from east to west, it's like aviator Attackers vault games room. Covered. I like that. I like that more. I like that more than your justification. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I always say we should just call it Vault because that's like the anchor point of that Yeah, I remember song. the first time I saw you casting this. That was what you said. Anyway, we got Envy Taylor getting very aggressive around the bathroom side. He's about to be droned out. But he's still in a vulnerable position. If he moves back to Astronomy, he might last a bit longer. Yeah, or he can just slay them all and they all jump in. We saw a few of those um, goo mines heading on out. And that's going to be heady. Sending a few pre-fires through. I thought he got a kill when I heard the diffuser being dropped, honestly. <laughs> Not so yet. Eddie still playing fairly freely. A lot of the time when you see people defend inside of the um, inside of astronomy room, they're just always consistently sitting behind that box, behind the desk. But no, we're seeing Mantis run very, very freely, delaying as much time as they can and then moving on. Nelio is the first to fall from Ethan, roaming downstairs. That's one player down, but we knew Envy Taylor was also around here earlier. So Ethan has his work cut out for him on the Jackal. Yeah, Envy Taylor's nearby trying to get the uh, sneak up on the hallway, but I think Ethan might be aware of it. Of course, and Ethan did take 50 damage for his trouble against Nelio there, but, you know, I think that's uh, a trade anyone would take. A bomb it does mean located. that Ethan's very vulnerable in upcoming gunfights. It's likely to happen as Envy Taylor will be flanking shortly. Now he does... We'll be generating all these leisure mines in his pocket. You'd hope that he's got a good spot for them. Wow, what a great angle at L Hallway from Hetty. Attackers recovered yeah, the that's nice, leader. isn't it? Typically, L is where you see a lot of the push coming from. Ethan tracking out Envy Taylor, forcing him to play much more passively and move on backwards. Ethan clearing up through downstairs. Could start opening up some of this floor below if he wishes. He, yeah, he's confident that it's clear. You know, this is something we didn't think about. Instead of running the buck, they could have been running a jackal. Yeah, it's true. Still, Located a I, I think that the um, the grenades on the buck, are on border anyhow, are much more useful. Derp is starting to push forward. He spots out the Yokai drone, but not before it tags him up and swishes on away. 
is going to float away on its uh, pretty slow, I reckon. Oh, that yeah. was a bit of a misplay too. We're going to see the uh, lifeline take out the drone of Silex in the middle of the uh, barbed wire. Oh, wow. And Envy Taylor starting to peek down long hallway. Got a couple of goo mines he can put through there. He's also got some on his flank as well to prevent Ethan coming up the stairs. But Ethan's busy chipping away at this floor. Hasn't found anything of it. Oh my goodness, look at the time remaining on the clock. 10 seconds remaining. Ethan can't push up those stairs for all the goo mines and filing in through the long hallway. Finally, Derbeth finds one with the G8. Ethan onto MV Taylor. Where's this plant going down? It's, it's not. not. Defenders win. <laughs> Whoa, jinx. <laughs> yes, my God. <laughs> I had a heart in my throat there for a minute. Plant denied there by Nova from the vault. Orglis, once again, faffing about too much, not uh, being quick enough. I think that's really it. I mean, they took so long to do what was fairly little. I mean, they, yeah. they cleared out that north side of the map fairly quickly. Um, but once it actually came to pushing down long hallway and actually killing Envy Taylor, it took way, way too long. Oh, yeah, for sure. So that is Mantis picking up the first round as we're going to be going to the secondary choice of uh, Dining Room Kitchen. Not really. Wow. This is, yeah, this is usually the last bomb site picked. Yeah, normally people will go to the uh, statuary. Oh, sorry, third third bomb site. People that don't like living, that's the one. Yeah. It's too confused. Yeah, so typically you see, see statuary and then kitchen. Defense, but I, I've actually seen kitchen a bunch. And I personally attackers. like kitchen. Um, if you're confident with your retakes on the top floor of the bedroom, then. I think it's a, a better bomb site than, than the statue. I there. think the great thing about this bomb site is that we've got players that will sit in places on site. There'll just be a close range brawl when the attackers come in to try and take the uh, bomb sites. A lot of close up fights and close up engagements. That's right. And that's where, really, well, as a defender, you're vulnerable to the, the vertical play. And we haven't seen that much vertical play from Mantis yet. So they've got the, uh, the pulse around. Could potentially yeah, do it. We'll see go. whether Orglis can. Uh, one up them on the vertical play. I think it's really going to come down to Mantis just playing above, baiting Orglis into t attacking above, and it'll be a question of who wins that engagement and whether Mantis can have a late flank above. And whether Orglis can do it quick enough as well. Exactly, because that's been the big highlight for them. What I'm surprised about, though, is we're not seeing Orglis running a buck for that vertical play. Sometimes, I mean, you can do it with a sledge, right? Yeah. So you've got a sledge, you can do it... In this case, this map, this bomb site, they only want to be attacking downwards. They take the top floor and then they open holes looking downwards. So perhaps it's just a comfort pick for Emo. Yeah, but we still see Emo Rin traditionally play a lot of buck. I believe it's his, um, listed as his favorite operator. Yeah, I agree with you. But I mean, maybe he, maybe he prefers ledge these days or maybe he wants to get rid of castle barricades. This is a okay, lethal position for Sweet Black. If that window gets opened up, he could be sending a... C4 sailing back out at the attackers, of course. Be a reasonably blind C4. It'd be a bit of a gamble. Looks like the attackers hoping to push in to the master bedroom. Might be a couple of echo drones they've got to contend with, though. Yeah, it doesn't really look like Mantis are putting too much of a fight up. They're going to let them get in there, but oh. Sweet Black, there's that C4 I was on about. It's going to find Joey. Nemo in on the entry, takes out the Mute Jammer, allowing his teammates to further search up ahead. Inelio also has a C4 still in hand. Could use for the vertical oh. play later, but what a 2k oh, for located. Ethan. Nova finally refragged onto, though, by Hetty. Was that really worth it now? Wait, did he just drop into the bomb site by accident? I think I think he might have. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but anyhow. August now pushing on from the pantry side. Oh, Nilio spots out his own teammate. Yep, that's your teammate. Puts Salix. a couple bullets his way. <laughs> Silex one kill. Now the plant going down. Emo in down just up to Derp and Silex. Ooh, there we go. Derp is going to cover the planter, leaving it all up to Envy Taylor in the one on two retake as that plant is confirmed. He's going to see the head of. He's going to see Silex, but oh, no, no, he's not even looking. He's not going to land anything at all. He's going to see Envy Taylor start to. Peeking out onto the angle, he's going to see Solix take him down oh, with the flashbangs no, there. He he's looking teammate. the wrong way and Derpe's going to finish him off. Looked a bit dicey there for a moment. And Orglis are going to even up the score. I thought Derpe flashed his teammate. Uh, sorry, I thought Derpe was flashed by Silex as well. I thought that Silex's misplay there would have been making it all over. But no, fortunately for Orglis, they do steal away around. Didn't start off so great with a C4 against them, but... A incredibly surprising 2K from Ethan, coupled with a good utilization of the pantry area from Silex and Derpe.
It was a good round for them. That was weird, wasn't it? It's like, it's really like, well, we don't want to take top. We're just going to run into site and find the frags and make his try and retake against us. And it worked. I mean, it was just two players, and I think it was really to, to do with the intel and the, the stealth in which that the two players snuck into the bomb site and started making it happen. And also the fact that Ethan had thinned out the numbers a bit. When you stop playing Rainbow Six and start playing Splinter Cell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, a bit of that stealth <laughs> move. I like it. Can. Looks like it's a retry of the same bomb site for Mantis, though. Perhaps they'll be a little bit more tuned in if uh, if there's a, a sudden drop from above by Ethan. I think he dropped like this hatch inside of the um, inside of that connecting room or something. I mean, that's yeah. my only explanation. Was it an accident? <laughs> that's the question. I feel like it. Pro I don't know, man. How do you accidentally shotgun the hatch you're standing on top of? Like if with Maverick, I understand, but <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Maybe Ethan was just like, sorry guys, I'm going in. He's like, guys, I'm making the play. <laughs> Makes the play. I think Mantis should have the advantage. Um, I mean, they're not likely to find the C same C4 kill they did last time, but I think that Org was sneaking up through that main area. It's not going to work two times in a row. As soon as Mantis realize that's what's the go, then Emmy Taylor can chuck countless lesion mines into that doorway. Yeah, yeah, I really want to see Orglis take top floor with a, you know, a lot more um, teamwork and, you know, oomph about it. Well, Emo in on the entry. I trust him to do what needs to be done. Ooh, that's C4. C4. Yep, well, expanded with no damage. Oh, actually, Joey struggled a bit, but he's still alive at least. Oh, that was the C4. Exact same position. It was the C4 where I was talking, uh, sorry, where you were talking about earlier, thrown through that window. Bit blind, though. Doesn't find anything as of yet. Well, looks like they are going to start droning out top floor, but are they going to be as emphatic this time? Are they going to make sure they take it all? Or, uh, you know, just do a, a half job? Wow, I think he threw it over the uh, over the mute jammer. Nice work. That's nice, yeah. yeah. I mean, Taylor's still aggressive, though, and Ilio as well, with the shotgun, no less. Joey will have called that out to his team. Not wise for August to just face peek this straight into the shotgun of Nelio. But Derpa, meanwhile, finds Nova. That's once again, the Echo is the first to fall on Mantis' side. It's the Nova thing where he either dies first or gets 3k. Hopefully his Yokai drones are still in positions to help out the team. Oh, and Hedy might walk right into the crosshair of oh, Ethan, no, but he looks Ethan. the wrong way. Oh, no, that's oh, that's oh, just mistimed, unfortunate there. Zimmerin's going to start yeah, mulching up this floor, going to start looking for an angle, and that's going to be a free kill for sure. Yes, Envy Taylor is going to finish off Ethan. That's where he put into even numbers across the board. No TK for Ethan this round. It's up to Zimmerin to try and clear out Astronomy. Ooh. Still <laughs> struggling at the moment. Trying to deal with Hetty inside of Astronomy, and oh, looks like the flank from Sweet Black. Imarin's not in a great position, but he finds one. Is he going to get refragged? He takes up the kit. He's, yeah, he's going to be able to grab that diffuser, but 50 seconds on the, cl on the clock, two on three. Still doable for Augustus, but you can really tell that Mantis are in the driving seat right here. Derpe once again putting on his night vision goggles, going for the stealth. Are they aware of his position? He might have made some noise in that barbed wire. Oh, surely that pulse is going to detect him, though, and he's going to start pre-firing his way in. Can't quite land the shots, but they were very close. 30 seconds now. Peaks again, not landing still, but Emo oh, Ren's no. going to come support, but Envy Taylor's ready for him, and Sweet Black finishes off Derpe. Now to be Mantis putting the round on the board. A great job from Envy Taylor as well. I was not expecting him to 180 that fast. Oh, they hit fire, too. Oh. Mantis really stepping up there, and I uh, look, I, I said it, I feel like... This, the way that August won that with that stealth, it's not the kind of thing that they can do two times in a row. And that's like, that's the story of August at the moment. Sometimes they come up with these nice little ideas that they can tie up in a little bow and, and, and tie together, but it's just not working so far when they try and do it a second time. Well, back to AVG. <laughs> yep, right on. I feel like... Uh, I think it's a tactical pause at the moment. Yeah, just yep. just three seconds left on the clock, so yeah. we'll, we'll go through that. Um, last time, this bomb site was picked. Orglis just had no sense of time whatsoever. Yeah. And, I mean, other than the time factor itself, is it something to do with the actual push that they made? Or what, what needs to go? Well, it was one of those... What I like to call one-dimensional push. Like, it was all just from the one side of the map. 
And it, it almost seemed like the whole team was trying to bait each other. <laughs> And then when they, yeah, and then they've got like 20 seconds on the clock, like, crap, we need to run in. So they will just start running in. I really think like they were trying to, you know, push from um, from the north side of the map and then have Ethan come up from below on the stairs, which he did end up doing. It's just it was way too late. Yeah, and by that time, there were so many lesion mines there as well. Yeah. And I, mean, I really think the lesions have been working out so well and effectively uh, for the squad as well, just preventing that and punishing the fact that August is already taking a long time. Well, that's who uh, Envy Taylor's been playing, and we were saying that Envy Taylor's been doing so much work for his team, haven't we? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Envy Taylor, he gets the kills on the board, but he also contributes to the team in a, in a much more kind of meta way, a, a way that you wouldn't necessarily see on the scoreboard. Yeah, Legion is uh, one of those operators that we see so much at the high level, but you really feel like he's not important enough to ban out. But uh, I know, that's so funny, isn't it? Yeah. The way that Legion is so high picked and so powerful, you know, when it comes to his kit for a fragging ability, for ro making rot late rotations on a roam or making site rotations, and then plus the, the utility itself of the goo mines, but you never see him banned. Yeah, well, I don't know. It seems like some teams don't play him much, though. Like yeah. may maybe that's the full process there, but. I feel like if you, if you don't have a Legion, you don't feel too remiss. Like, you're like, all right, I'll jump on a, a mute. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not like he's else. the integral part of each strat, is no. he? No. Whereas, I mean, the one that, uh, that we did have banned out for each side, I mean, all of us banning out Mirror, that is integral. That is, yeah. Mirror redefined the way that you anchor in Siege. Yeah, and then, of course, uh, what was the other one? Valkyrie. Valkyrie which is <laughs> unique in terms of the amount of intel that it can really yeah. gain, gain for you. The intel plus the versatility of them being able to move so much, unlike operators such as, you know, your Echo, which doesn't have that mobility. Well, also the versatility of where you can place them as opposed to like Maestro cameras right. and, and the Echo Drone. You can lob them all the way outside and get, gather so much information. That's right. We're just having a couple technical issues, but we'll update you soon. We'll uh, get through this match back in very shortly. But until then, look, we started off with a nice AVG hold for Mantis. Not enough time from Orglis to actually get anything done. Then we went over to Kitchen and Mantis... Wait, Orglis actually pulled Org it away. Orglis, That's right. Yeah. So I, I'm forgetting because it, it was started well for Mantis, and then we had some splinter cell action from Orglis <laughs> sneaking in their little sandfish area from the uh, from the main stairs uh, in the pantry, and then finally Mantis, you know, made the adaptations and, and yeah. held on. Now we return to Aviator. What's what's gonna get? I, I don't know. It really feels like Orglis have come into this confidently, but it, just looking at them not be able to take the top floor of kitchen properly or at all or just take forever to push onto AVG is is not good signs in my in my opinion. Yeah, it is a bit about that initiative sometimes I find for Orglis when it comes to the time ticking ticking away. Yeah, Imarin's always up there with Sledge, but sometimes a bit unclear of okay, how are we actually gonna take that step Jack in the and kill these players inside? Ethan is always off on his own, which sometimes works out. It worked out well on border. But it's just not been working out well here. Yeah, well, here we go. We are back on into the action, of course. Operator selections, Dev, anything uh, too interesting for you? Looks like pretty standard stuff. Same kind of thing from August across the board. Um, I, honestly, I don't know how much the uh, the IQ is actually helping out from Derp. I feel like maybe even bringing some kind of more forceful utility would assist them somewhat. But as for the defensive side, once again, like it's the same same, right? And Envy Taylor stacking up these lesions on these stairs. It means that he can play in that hallway just so aggressively. Yeah, it can do so much damage. Of course, you know, maybe they could bring an operator such as a Thatcher. Just demolish all the things on the stairs and then just uh, shift W up them. Yeah, well, we know Orglis really don't like Thatcher. They typically ban it, but not this round. They decided to target their ban onto Mantis with the Monty. So, yeah, no, I agree with you. Sometimes, perhaps, Orglis so familiar with just auto-banning Thatcher that then they don't really remember how to play with him or don't remember to play with him when they go for a counterban. Yeah, but I, I think picking Thatcher just to help clear out those stairs is probably not the play. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, like, but seriously, I mean, you could you could use it to counter the batteries on that main wall, try and Habana open some holes and push uh, from the study side. There, There is versatility. You can counter the Echo Drone. Oh, Derpe just gets off the drone too oh. late and just misses the shots under Envy Taylor. He is running for the hills. Hetty, however, is going to be trying to engage in some of these players upstairs. 
one minute down, a little bit of intel gained on what's happening upstairs, but still Hedy and Emmy Taylor both allowed to retreat back into a more fortified position. Hedy's still setting up too. Uh, well, I know, sometimes it's nice to have an extra ADS in your pocket. You know, you don't know exactly where you'll be anchoring. Uh, you'll, you'll be dropping your anchor sometimes in a hallway outside the objective, sometimes all the way back in the objective, so I don't mind that. Look, Ethan, I feel like, really needs to step oh. up <laughs> and, and work with the team. Okay, that's hilarious. Double The double Claymore? All right. What? Why put them next to each other? Surely... Like, I was, I was going to say, yeah, how is this exactly going to work? Like, is, is there a way you can get around one but not the other? Like, Yeah, I don't get that. Maybe they're expecting someone to shoot one Claymore and fall into the next one, but surely if you're spraying one, you can easily spray the second. Anyhow, looks like a full retreat back into the bomb site, abandoning the position on L Hall. That'll help out Orglis quite a lot, won't it? Yeah, well, once again, Orglis have got control of this north side of the map, but they really need to get a move on. A minute on the clock is still some decent time, but, you know, they've got to use it very effectively. Bomb I think the, the simple... Fa oh, here's where you need the Thatcher. See, they're going to be like, oh, whoops. Where is this Thatcher? It's just throwing a complete spanner in their works. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's completely put them at a standstill. And you can see Derpa is going to try and go downstairs and, and take out the batteries by going below. But how long is it going to take? And, and what's the likelihood late. that he's going to get taken out? Ethan's trying to protect him. Oh, it's, it's a struggle to destroy that single bandit battery. And then this doesn't even count the fact that it could be a trick. Looks like it's not going to happen, but the impact might deny it. Looks like it's not so... Yeah, it's too low. That's going to completely open up Vault. So 20 seconds on the clock, though. All that's going to have to go fast. Still trying to get all their players up onto the same level. The final push onto the bomb side is going to be bloody. And two players start oh. off. Oh, Joey, you saw him take him out. But finally, he's refragged. It's just up to Emo Rin, and he can't even find Novo. He flips what around shot. and finishes him off. Mantis cling on to AVG. Look at this from Nova. 180, practically. Yeah, once again, way too slow. Yeah. Orgulus, you need to speed it up. Yeah, it's really uh, worrying, and I, I, I definitely think the Thatcher is actually a big thing. I mean, we, <laughs> we, we, you, can, we kind of talked about it as a joke, but, like, no, I, I fully support this Thatcher is what we need to see. We need to just see Orgulus have the confidence to just be like, okay, this is what we're going to do now. Let's step up. Let's do it. Instead of all this wishy-washy stuff and all these indirect operators. It seem, yeah, it seems like they're trying to be too complicated. What's the KISS principle? You're going you're gonna to ask me? Why don't you answer that yourself? <laughs> Keep it simple. Well, then it calls you stupid. But uh, sometimes simple is the best, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, full, I fully agree. And I mean, sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for putting you on the spot there, but you put me on the spot. So I'm going to make you answer it. Um, no, I fully agree. Like, you look at some of the best teams in the world, and yet they bring up these really complicated... Um, operator lineups where everything is about positioning and about refragability instead of about direct counters. And then sometimes you just need a simple direct counter operator. Like there is a time and a place for everything. Yeah. But we talk about that round where Orglist went for the uh, blunt object strat of the Monty and everything and just yeah, straight to the bomb site. And yeah, it did work. Like. Of course, it's not going to work every time, but like you know, those are the kind of you know just simple ideas that you know everyone can get on board with, and everyone understands that can lead you to winning a round. And look, here's something I want to talk about as well. Orglis are here alone. This is five players all sitting at their PCs with no coach standing behind them. Previous events, Orglis have had a team manager at least standing behind them. They might not know the strategies, but he can pull the guys' heads together when the comms are messy. And they don't have that this time. And they're beating their head against the wall with the same operator lineup round after round. And I really feel like something's got to give. Something's got to change. Well, if they don't do something, we might end up uh, only a two-mapper here. It's possible. Oh! Oh. Envy Taylor almost gets a very unaware Sykes. In fact, he still might end up with a kill here. In fact, he's going to take a lot of damage for it. But Hetty, in the end, is also going to find Emo Rin. Orglis, just not aware of these positions. And oh, there we nice go, Hetty with another. Just completely slays Ethan, but he's going to get out of there just. Both of these players now probably wanting a reset. Looks like Hetty's going to get one. <laughs> reset for a reset, I think. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Tag for a tag. Isn't that adorable? I love it. And, I mean, it just shows... Mantis had all the intel on those two players from Nova with the Echo Drone. It's something that Orglis used so much, and Mantis are using it to, effect, to incredible effect as well. 
Yeah, and Henny's oh, going to find his third as well. That's Joey going oh down. He can't find the fourth, though. Solix will finish him off. He's gone low for it, but this is just shambles here from Orglis. Bit greedy on that last kill, but it didn't really matter in the end. He did a lot of damage to Silex. Now there's only one full HP player left for Orglis. Derper and Silex really have to step it up defending the living area now. Yeah, a minute on the clock as well. Well, minute 10. But it uh, really feels like Orglis... I don't know, they just ran into a brick wall, didn't they? Named yeah. Teddy. And it, yeah, and it's funny, though, because this is the bomb site that you'd expect to win. This is the least picked bomb site. Why yet, wasn't he droned? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, um, I don't get that. I mean, like, Envy Taylor baited the push, and then Hetty just took advantage of that opportunity. Now it's a quiet moment while the two remaining August players decide. All right, how do we try to come back? In a two versus four, when we have no control. Oh, Derpe, Derpe camera, mate. Just destroying the cameras, the default cameras, would be a good start. Silex, oh, is he going to get down if he folds this? Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> Maybe not down, but at least finished off there as uh, Derpe is going to do Mantis's work for him. Oh my god. That round could not have gone any worse for Orglis. Envy Taylor with the cleanup Ugh. onto Derp here. That was painful to watch. Yeah, this is... Um, look, Orglis aren't yet beating Arrowwolf for most team kills in the same match, which was uh, four in a series for Arrowwolf. But look, there's certainly... There's, there's things going wrong here. And this is really where you take a tactical pause and you talk to your coach. Yeah. We don't have no coach. We don't have the coach here, unfortunately. Flux is still chilling out at home. I'm sure watching with incredible pain <laughs> for some of these rounds, but no doubt, hopefully he'll come to an. Gotcha! Oh my gosh! Do my <laughs> eyes deceive me? I'm excited for this. I think this could be the one, guys. This could this be the dining play. kitchen attack. Finally seeing, a, you know, just a simple Protect your bombs operator coming out here from Orglis. And, you know, maybe this may not be the bomb site that we needed him on or what Orglis needed him on. But yeah. uh, sometimes, you know, keeping it simpler is the better option. Still Derpa going for that IQ. I'm not really sure what Derpa is using the utility for, though, because, I mean, he hasn't really been taking out these Yokai drones. They've still done the damage and enabled Hedy to get that 2k on... 3k, I guess. You could count all three. Also interesting is he's using the LMG. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's just common. Derp has been nailing a, a way out for a while now. We've seen some yeah, players left, across the world, three. like, for example, Slash. Slash Ugg from Rogue and a couple of... When, when the other Rogue players game. tried playing IQ, you know, a couple of them have tried out the G8 as well. It's a decent Attackers weapon. Their just takes way too long to ADS, I feel. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's the biggest issue I find with all of the LMGs, yeah, really. Yeah, that's true. It's consistently among all of them. And perhaps... Only 50 round instead of 30 round might not be enough to uh, to outweigh that. Especially when you got Mando. like the PDW or something like that. That uh, you know Jackal has 50 bullets that that you can aim down sights really fast because yeah. because it's, it's an SMG technically. Yeah, I agree. And look, Derpe is using this utility. Certainly caught him in positions where he hasn't been using the utility though. It seems like he's not using it enough late round and just early round. Like you know, for example, we saw him on that camera. He's IQ. He should be spotting out these cameras even though they're the default ones. Like. <laughs> Well, one good thing is that he's taking out these lesion mines from Envy Taylor, which we've talked about how prominent they can be. This Thatcher in combination with the Hibana should make an yep. easy work to drone out and open up the bomb site. Yeah, the mute was really tripping them up earlier, and now they're being able to get those drones passed easily. You know, are they going to be able to make that next step, though, which is take top floor emphatically? And here we go, Emo Rin shutting down that lesion straight away. Good first kill. Emo Rin, I, I really think he's been good on his entries on this map, stepping up. I think he have some holes in the floor. I'm not really sure what All right, so he's going to start using these uh, these angles to push side, I'm sure, at some point. But still, taking the top floor is, is a step that hasn't yet been completed. Yeah, he's just going to put a lot of pressure on the uh, defenders on site. But uh, who do we have? We have Hetty, who's all the way over in Statuary and uh, even retreating back downstairs himself. All the way down as well, and it looks like he's got Nova to assist. I can't yeah, I was like say, that. Nova's been doing so much work with those Echo drones, helping out the Romas. And it's great to see. I mean, typically, if you have you know your Ash player on an Echo, it's probably because he wants to have the MP5 SD and he wants to peek everything. Whereas we're seeing Nova do so much work as a communicative player. 
Yeah, and oh, that's those uh, Mute Jammers working again against Orglis. Fantas still in a strong position, located. playing patiently at the bottom of these uh, stairs in the various places, and unfortunately for <laughs> Silex, his ex Kairos are completely destroyed. No angle into kitchen, and that yeah. hallway which he snuck up earlier is also being held. Ethan finally does find Nilio, though this could enable a push up from this hallway and this staircase. Yeah, it really feels like Orglis seem to like be just be running into brick walls and not knowing how to deal with them. But you know, this one's gone so uh, good so far. They're at a five and three man advantage. There's 25 seconds on the clock. We're gonna see Hetty aggress up on Ethan and find that frag just after a. Probably a bit too long there, but oh, oh Emo is going to find Sweet Black, but Sweet Black almost had the reactions there. 15 seconds though. Nova still got some Echo Drones. Surely here we go. He's going to jump on it. He's going to see Derpe. Oh, He's no. going to see the planter. But oh, oh no, that was quick. We're going to see Derpe deny that. Nova's going to find Derpe. However, an Emo is going to finish off Nova. That was right to the wire, ladies and gentlemen. But we're going to finally see Orglis get another round on attack. Piece by piece, Orglis took Mantis apart. And it was so close. There were so many tiny moments when I thought that this was Mantis open and shut, but no, Orglis held on by the skin of their teeth. And they end the half 2-4. And you know what kick-started it? The Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> Allowing their drones to get on in. You know, it sounds so ridiculous to some people, but it, it's wrong. It's Sorry, right. It's so right. <laughs> sorry, that was a bit of a, a slip there. It's so true, right? It, it sounds so silly, but yeah, simple really does work so well. Now, Orglis have the opportunity to perhaps feel a little bit more comfortable. They don't have to take the initiative. The main weakness that they've had is taking the initiative. They can chill out on defense now. Plus, Villa is the mainly defender side, and it's so big. It allows defenders to move around a lot. It's very hard for attackers to cut them off. And we're going to be seeing Kitchen as that first choice bomb site. Quite like that. Sometimes if uh, teams have a specific operator they want to bring to Aviator, they'll bring it, and then they'll, like, oh, no, this is Kitchen. Got a mess. Oh, it'll be a bit messed up. But look, Mantis still have plenty of vertical. Um, of, you Seen know, a buck finally. Yeah, vertical potential. So the buck, the jackal as well. Even the Zephyr, you could say, um, and a lot of good roam clear with the, both the jackal and the uh, the Dokubi combined. It looks like a very similar strategy that Mantis were doing here that Orglis are now implementing. Yes, I agree, and I could actually even say vice versa, just based on the operator lineups. Perhaps we'll see something similar across the board. Yeah. Hopefully these drones can be denied from Orglet so that they can have a successful roam upstairs. Well, we are into the action phase, and this is a very swift push from below oh here man, from Mantis. Hetty's going to be the first one crouch walking up these stairs. He's going to hear the call. No, they're going to change their minds. <laughs> I just love the, the fact that even... This is like what we were saying earlier. You know, better five people commit to a bad idea than no one commit at all. And... That, uh, Mantis committed fully to that. They are so in sync. They make a call and then they're all there. Even if it seems a bit ridiculous and not like the ultimate strategy to just Deploy rush drone. together from one angle, pushing together really does help out. Wow, that was something <laughs> and a half. I feel like I've seen things, Monkey. <laughs> well, Envy Taylor's going to find the first kill. That's Derpe going down. Sweet Black's going to take a lot of damage for oh, the trouble. Oh, oh that's nice. Silex through the floor. He's going to deny oh, those no. Urbana charges, but Nilio's right there to finish him off. That was not a worthy trade that for was Silex. It was a good idea, but the fact that he just took so long to execute it lost his life. Three players left for Orglis. Still Mantis with full numbers. That said, looks like Nova's struggling. Yeah, well, Joey is going to find it, but it really feels like Orglis don't have much control of their bomb site at all. Emo Rin still all the way downstairs. We'll be getting trackled, but uh, Joey looks like he's the lone defender on site with Ethan nearby. Still that roam clear potential, Hetty. Bring a reset onto Sweet Black. Envy Taylor down, but I don't believe that Ethan knows. Well, Emo Rin's in a position to bait him out if they go for the revive. This is perfect from Emo Rin. Hetty is going to walk right into him, but he's going to check, but Emo Rin still wins that fight. He's going to oh, surely get the finish off here. Oh, oh no, there's Emo. another on the stairs. Nilio will finish him off. Nilio's going to try and get this revive as well, but Ethan, surely he was nearby to deny this. Yes, oh, oh no! no! Oh what? my god, the triple bait. Nilio finishes off Ethan. It's all up to Joey on the defense against three players. 
all now have been reset. He spots out the rotation and he moves over to the A bomb site because of it. He's got to contend with this first angle though, and he's peeking straight into it. He gets jackal tracked, and now he's pinched between a rock and a hard place. Nelio finishes it off. Well, what a great bait. My God, that was it was very back and forth, wasn't yeah. it? Of, that's my bait, but now it's your bait, but now it's my bait. <laughs> like, it's like out baiting the bait. When the hunter becomes the hunted. I, I, I love that. That was exciting. But look, uh, things are slipping for Auglis. It's rough. I thought that for so long, like, Auglis, they, they may have been a man down, but they looked like they had the better position. Yeah, it was looking good to, like, I don't know. Well, we saw Mantis got the first two picks, but then Auglis looked like they were in great positions to capitalize back. But uh, it just slipped. Just a few missed shots here and there. I, and I think sometimes it's just coming down to, like, game decision making. And Mantis seemed to actually have the like real intense nitty gritty decision making down to a T as, as well as the communication. Like when they're in sync, they are in sync. And when it's like, oh, they might be baiting me. Okay, we'll watch out. Oh, one dead. All right, let's get them back. Oh, but they might, you know, game sense then. They might try and flank us again. So don't go for the revive straight away. Watch for that. And that's really when Mantis Attack are winning these brawls. Yeah, you really feel like that whole situation downstairs with the bait, to bait, to bait would have gone differently if Ethan had just stayed in his original position. Yeah. Rough well, time to be an Oglas fan, but... Hindsight 2020. Yeah, hindsight is 2020. And look, we can judge Five these decisions once we know the outcomes of them. It's much <laughs> easier, right? It's much easier to be critical of something that doesn't work uh, just because it doesn't work. Exactly. Now, same bomb site taken for Oglas attempting to do the same thing. Still quite a lot of rounds down. Mantis only one away from match point, series point. Well, Ethan on a bit of a solo roam up above as they are attempting to defend the same bomb site here, Mantis, but... Uh, yeah, I, I really... Okay, a lot of... Not so much solo. There's uh, definitely a, a lot of investment up top with three players, Emo, oh yeah, Derp, and Ethan. So I think together they can hold on, you know. Strength in numbers, but I really think that the utility brought by Mantis just enables them to do a lot more damage when they're coming up against individual players. So the Dokubi and the Jackal just are so effective at individual players, whereas with Orglis having the numbers advantage, it's going to help them a lot. Well, looks like Emo Rim wants to peek into this one, of course. He's uh, playing close, and Ethan is in support, and Solik's going to find the C4 into Nova. Ethan going to send a bit of a pre-fire over to keep them interested in him while Emo Rin's sitting in the perfect position to capitalize on an unwary Mantis member. Joey and Silex doing well on side as well. Despite oh, my what? Are they? Oh, my God. A flank in from Envy. Taylor finds two kills. Emo Rin now knows that it's his time to start moving. Derpe gets the refrag. Emo Rin won as well. Just heady left. Things have turned around. A good play from Envy Taylor, but fast reactions from the Romas of Orglis put them back in the lead. Oh, a few wallbangs coming out. It's going to take Hetty down by a 25% HP. He's going to see Emo Rin on site, but Emo Rin's going to land that headshot. What the heck just happened? So I was in the middle of saying that the defenders on site were doing well because they're dealing with these holes above <laughs> and still managing to stay alive. And Silex got a kill with the C4. But what you know what they weren't doing? They weren't watching the doors into the bomb site. And Envy Taylor took advantage of that opportunity, cleaned them both up. But oh, what I'm so impressed Two about... Two quick headshots. Yeah, it was nice. But... The three players upstairs, you know how long it took them to realize, oh, that's what's going on? Almost no time. And they came back from it so well. Yes, they did react very fast indeed. So that's Orglis putting another one up on the board, of course. But where are we going to now? Trophy room, statuary room. So uh, looks like Orglis. scared of Aviator, right? Yeah, completely avoiding the south side of the map, aren't they? Not sure how much luck they'll have on this top floor bomb site, but can. still bringing the mute. It's interesting, Derp is just grabbing the rook. What's interesting though is that Mantis did not go to this bomb site at all. That's true. This is the first time we're seeing this bomb site on this uh, on this map, and Mantis not really a fan of what is considered one of the viable bomb sites on this map. Just like Orglas seemed to not be a fan of what many considered to be the most viable bomb site on this map of Aviator. Well, as for Operator Picks, Nova's still sticking to that buck. I don't think he's been as effective on the buck as he was with the Ash. Yeah, I agree. Perhaps his team 
think he needs a bit more utility for that vertical play, but perhaps... Right, what's this? Second, mate. Oh, is Dope really going to go for a spot pick? I was, gonna, I was just going to mention that we've got the Rook pick as well. Oh, okay, this is a bit cheeky. Bit of a more off angle that you won't really be expecting too much of. Could work, but I wouldn't be I too surprised. I don't think anyone spawned there, Yeah, I though. wouldn't be surprised if no one spawns on the south side of the map. It's a north side bomb site, no spawn. There you go, Depper will be a bit disappointed about that. I yeah. think that a lot of these attacking uh, operator picks are, are expecting that bomb site is going to be AVG at some point. But, you know, Nova playing Buck, Buck would be great on that bomb site. Opening up all the floor below, just revealing any of the safe positions, the defenders. But on this bomb site, you know, it's maybe not quite as useful. Yeah, you can still open up the majority of the floor. It's just the fact that there's that uh, easy path down for the defenders from the, uh, I don't know, the open part of it, from underneath the skylight. Yeah, that, little, uh, that little balcony does help out, but Nova's grenades can certainly do some damage, preventing the impact trick, maybe doing some damage. I think uh, that's destroying some of the, uh, the mute jammers still. This impact grenade could prevent some of that at least. How'd we go, Emo? Envy Taylor once again at 2K, taking down Ethan and Silex. Not sure where that happened, but Joey has finally returned some fire. Yeah, there we go, but Joey's under a lot of fire, in fact. He's getting pressured hard over in astronomy. Emo and looks like he successfully impact tricked all of the Hibana pellets, and there's the last set. And they're going to try again. Bit missed time there with a flashbang to follow that one up, but he's still alive as Hetty will find Joey. Over in astronomy, it looks like Emo Rin's going to get the down, and he's going to oh get another peek in the spray transfer. Just demolishes Neilio, putting us into the two on two. Still possible for August to hold on, but Mantis is still determined to have this bomb site. Derpe being flushed back piece by piece. Sweep like not sure where this player is. Where is Emo Rin? But Derpe sneaks in as the smoke oh! goes down. Derpe takes him out. It's just Nova left with this buck. Oh, that was so close, but one on two with the skeleton key up close, and Emo Rin to finish him off. Big plays all around there. I really thought that Derpe was dead to the Doka B oh, on bomb site. It, it's the SMG12 recoil, right? Even his his crosshair was slightly too high for the head. Yeah. But he's got to pull it down to aim at the head and pull down for the recoil. That's just not going to happen in that amount of time compared to the MP5, which has so little recoil. So, so far we've seen... Uh, Three rounds on defense, then Orglis have taken two out of three. Do you really... Uh, hold on. Before I go on with that, we've got Derpe showing a Kavira. Surely it's not going to stick it. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now I can carry on with oh, what okay. I was saying. He's going Clash, though. That's, that's something. That's pretty spicy, isn't it? Why don't, why don't you uh, say your, your, t your two cents? As we go to AVG, of course... Um, Lost it? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, here's something to talk about, Monkey. We're Go going on. to AVG finally. And look, that's it's just sticking so much. I don't know. AVD, <laughs> AVG just sounds really like broad Aussie. I don't know. Is that... AVG? AVG. Let's go to AVG. Okay, I'm going to not do this. But uh, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, look, the Clash, I think, is a pretty good pick for it as well. This, this um, is a good pick for the Clash because it can play very aggressive around office. Yeah. Um, very little chance to get shot in the back when uh, scouting out over there. So our uh, observer for for this uh, sky, he, uh, he loves playing Clash on this bomb site. I play with him a lot, and he just loves playing around this 90 area where all of the uh, the ADSs are being set up. And you can seriously do some damage because when you're in the long range angles, you're not actually contesting them. You're just gathering intel and whittling away at the HP of the uh, attackers and, and gaining yeah. intel and slowing them down. Well, that's interesting. A like maestro right above a hatch, hook through. Well, yeah, and not only that, but it prevents it from being sledged or mavericked. Because you can't walk up to I it. I think you should still be able to get the distance on it. Maybe, maybe. Right, yes. from the side. It's possible. Makes it a little bit more difficult. Looks right, like though. Derpe is playing around 90, however. Yeah, I think it's a good spot for a clash. And uh, it'll be interested to see whether Ethan helps out on that area, whether he's just going to play this very free roam. That's really what Ethan's been doing, isn't he? is on all of these rounds, he's been playing so separate to the rest of the team. Yeah, and it really feels like that's what Derp uh, does oh, on other maps as well. Here. It seems like they share this role of being the uh, solo player or, you know, Ethan, go kill. Derp, yeah. go kill. Like, I feel like it's what Todd used to do on the team. So perhaps yeah. that's been kind of transferred a little bit. Ethan was always kind of this supportive flex who would then find kills in, like, impact frags, whereas now he's been told just go and find any frag you can. Go and, like, you know, screw up our opponents. 
Uh, playing positions they don't definitely expect. Definitely do that now with oh, Ethan. Ethan. So very close to Nova, but it looks like he doesn't take the opportunity. Interesting that Mantis seem to be entering in downstairs. Yeah, they're as gonna... well as the north side. Oh! oh Envy man. Taylor just missing the shots onto Ethan. Ethan doesn't uh, take a single point of damage there. Envy Taylor clearing out downstairs. Potentially going to aggress onto the position where he was playing as the defender on these south stairs. See, I suppose it's fine if they're taking downstairs, right? Because they're going to be able to get that vertical pressure from below, start clearing out some of the positions of the defenders. And they don't have to go up through the choke, choke points of the stairs. In fact, look where Sweet Black is right now. Well, that's where you think that they that what their strategy was. They've brought the Bok every single round, I, I assume, in hopes to contest this. Eddie's going to deal swiftly. Oh, oh no, that's a clever ADS placement. Eddie all out of explosives. Oh, I can't quite get the shots on it in time, Nilio there, but uh, I know they're going to be able to bait it out if they tr if the, the Maestro is there to counter those Habana charges. So they're pushing on in, opening it up above this. Oh, no, he's being abused. Oh, oh no. no, it makes him fluff up on the grenade throw. And Derpin now playing aggressive once again on 90. Mantis seems to be falling apart at the moment. Could this be the round for Orglis to even up the scoreline? Oh, that's a great nade there from Nova to take out Joey. And they have got control of this uh, aviator bomb oh But Ethan is going to push on before Sweet Black will reply. Hetty's going to find Emo Rin. So it's all up to Derpe and Silex. Derpe, remember, with the shield. And he's going to get shot in the head. All up to Silex. Now, was there someone right behind him? Yes, I believe there was. Yeah. yeah that's Nova ready with the skeleton key. Bit of missed potential there, unfortunately, for Orglis, but a good salvage of the round for Mantis when it looked like they were going to lose on it, honestly. Now they're on match point. Yeah, I was like looking at the top down view and I was like, there was someone right behind yeah. Solix. How is he still alive? <laughs> I feel like, you know, you know when those uh, those really old theater players where everyone's just yelling, behind you. And like, you know, there's a really cheesy villain like behind with his mustache stroking <laughs> it. I feel like it was one of those moments. <laughs> right. um, but we are on match point here for Mantis now. Yeah, and it's getting very close for it, too, as well. Certainly, it's time that they want to just close this out. Yeah, for sure. There's, uh... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> G'day there. You saw nothing. So, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> we're having some, some issues with the, uh, with the server. Nice shot, I think, as Ethan put it. Did you see that in chat, NS? Yeah. Nice shot. Yeah, I think that, that aptly puts it. But, hey, we're on match point now. We're on series point now. This could be where everything falls apart. And this is Atletico's map pick. Sorry. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Orglis's map pick. Bingo. Just go with it. <laughs> Let's pretend I said nothing. I, this is worrying times. And look, heading into this tournament, I thought Mantis was the scariest opponent. And then I saw Fav play. And now I'm not sure about that. Yeah. But either one of these teams that's going to be facing off the Japanese in the grand final. I don't know if Orglis are tight knit enough to make it happen. Don't think they have the chops to make it. Um, like, I'm... We've seen flashes of brilliance. We've seen some things that I've been very impressed with. But bringing it all together has just not really been there. And I, I suppose that's understandable for a team that's made changes recently. But then on the flip side of that, Self Mantis. Yeah, it's really funny. There's something about, like, when you think about what makes a team, you've got, like, individual player skill, things like, you know, gun skill, general game sense and stuff. You've got the really great strategies. And we've seen both of those things from Orglis and yep. in spades as well. The one thing that, that they don't have that Mantis is doing better is this goo in the middle that <laughs> just sticks them all together chemistry. and makes it have a... And that's chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that Mantis definitely do seem to have over um, their Australian opponents. It's, it's something you just can't come up with, though. No. It, it has to just come from playing them together and... It's funny, because in the ANZ scene, I would have said that Orglis was one of the most uh, chemistry... chemical? Chemical yeah. teams? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't really work, does it? Chemistrius? <laughs> Chemistrius. <laughs> How are we going to go about this one? I don't know. But, you know, they've got that kind of chemistry. They work together so well, and, and historically, that's the thing that I've really been impressed by them. And, you know, the thing that we used to say is you've got the triple threat of fraggers, Todd no longer uh, on the team. But, you know, when if one's not showing up, the others will be. It, it doesn't feel like the same kind of operation of the team anymore. I really... I don't know. Do we, do we want to put it down to the fact that they aren't having someone that's going to make these big broad calls? Is, is that what we're thinking they might I, be lacking Honestly, in? I feel like. And on top of not having an in, a dedicated a dedicated in-game leader, they also don't have someone sitting behind them 
to just reassure them. Give them the chair slaps. Yeah. You know how important that is? It actually is so <laughs> important. Yeah, who's who's carrying out the oranges at half time? <laughs> well, mum said she was busy this weekend. So. <laughs> That's a real bummer, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> so, for Mantis, I mean, this is the, the, the edge of it. Going up against Fav, that would be a rematch too. We had a rematch earlier today. Yep. The rematch of Irons versus Cryptic. And it went the same way as it did last time with Fav taking the W. If Mantis take this win, we're going to have a rematch of the grand final from the season six APAC land finals. Yeah, which I believe uh, Irons. At, well, it at was time, a shutout. Irons, yeah, Irons, Irons now Fav yeah, destroyed Mantis. But we're assuming that, okay, we, we're looking ahead, probably getting ahead of ourselves. But let's say Mantis did get to the grand final. I feel like it would be very close. In fact, I'd probably be leaning towards Mantis. Really? So what is it? Because I felt like Fav were just doing so well so consistently. Aside from the fact that they weren't mixing things up between rounds, what is it that Mantis have that Fav don't? Well, I just want to say that, you know, from what I saw, um, especially when I was standing behind the players earlier, it really felt like Fav were winning rounds that they shouldn't have, especially yeah. that very first round. It was a one-on-three. <laughs> one-on-three, yeah. I was like, how does that even happen? I, I don't reckon that Mantis are going to allow those rounds to slip by them. And, you know, that's the difference between a win and a loss. So would you say that Orglis actually has more in common with Fav, even though Fav have been playing really well and outplayed Aerowolf, Fav have, they, they just hammered the same strategies over and over. And that was a thing that me and Flea were talking about, the biggest critique of Fav. On Oregon, they did the same defense like three or four times in a row and it just kept failing. Eventually it worked one time, but it kind of just looked like it worked because they just got an early frag. It's not something that's reliable. Yeah, it was, it was a very frag heavy strat, wasn't it, yeah. on basement? Yeah. And, and like, Orglis also had a similar thing where they had this really nice elaborate strat for the upstairs armory on border, and it worked sometimes, and then Mantis went into it and it didn't work anymore. I want to I wanna, um, say that, you know, I felt that what the issue for Aerowolf what there was is that they were probably playing too mechanical. They weren't, uh, like, I don't know, they, they were too focused on the strat that they couldn't adapt immediately to when something surprising happened. And that's which... what Mantis have been doing really well. Yeah. So, look, maybe you're right. Look, we're still on this game, though. <laughs> August yeah. versus Mantis. Focus. Focus. It's now on match point, serious point. We're talking about this because Mantis look like they could be on the cusp of sending themselves to the grand final. But we're going to bring that you, but bringing that to you very shortly. So, stay tuned.
Welcome back to Sydney, Australia for the Six Invitational APAC Qualifier. Here we have the four best teams from the APAC region who have come through their respective sub-regions to culminate here in this LAN event to fight over one spot at the Six Invitational in February this year. My name's Dev Marta and Monkey Fist is here with me. Yeah, we've uh, had a pretty exciting day so far, haven't we? Yeah, it's been a really good uh, good time. Casted with Flea earlier, the uh, the Fav Gaming versus uh, Aerowolf match, which was heartbreaking to say the least. I mean, like, it's yes. fantastic to see Fav do what they did. But at the same time, you know, I, I walked out down to get some lunch earlier and I bumped into the Aerowolf guys. Are they heartbroken? It's, it, yeah. yeah, and it's just, it's heartbroken. So many times they've come to an event like this and just fell short trying yeah. to make that hurdle to an international event. But, but uh, uh, we're talking about Orglis yeah, and enough of that. Enough right of that. <laughs> enough, enough about being sympathetic towards Aerowolf. It's time to see where the Mantis can close it out here on Match Point Series Point. We're on the cusp of potentially seeing a Korean team go head-to-head -head with a Japanese team in the final. This is the last ditch effort chance for the Aussies. What can they make of it? Well, they're going to start it off on dining room and kitchen. All right, this is the uh, this is one that we have seen them attempt earlier. So uh, yeah, they, they won it the second time they tried it. Didn't have so much luck the yeah. first time round, but uh, upon revisiting, they they did uh, manage to to make it work out. Then they won up just above this bomb site, Statuary, and then they lost what we like to call AVG, Aviator Gangster. You know, we, we were talking about how, you know, Orglis are losing. But do you really feel like, you know, we, we could be looking at a completely different scoreline if just a few different fights went different ways? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, like I maybe we were being a bit too harsh on Orglis previously, yeah, like saying, oh, they just don't have as much chemistry, they're not being expansive enough with their strats. Five but Yeah, do maybe. It. I mean, one of the things that I do like about Mantis Attack is they've won these, like, just real game sense fights. Like, that session where it was, like, one team baiting the other, like, mm. four teams in a row all over that down oh. player. Oh, my God. Derpe, he went for his spawn peak for the Ella? second round in a row. Not quite sure why. He went for a run out. What? All right. That's not something you see every day. That's a very long run out. Yeah. Takes a lot of work. And it would have required his teammate to open up that hole as well because, uh, Ella doesn't come up with any explosives anymore, but that's a real rough one. If Orglis lose on this round, it's it's the round Orglis lost, then Derpus died spawn peaking. Well, you know, sometimes you got to make up those kind of plays, and sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. And uh, if it worked, we'd be singing his praises right now, wouldn't we? I know, that's the thing. It's so difficult to, um, you know talk about players and um oh, oh my no. god look at that sweet black just trying to shoot through the floor joey does take a little bit of damage through the uh through the floor but so far not the killing blow yeah and he's gonna walk into a grishmot i believe emarin's been downed upstairs wow and he's completely exposed as well no chance for a revive i think he's just gonna hide here maybe what was even that from a claymore i assume so maybe he can just gain some information um, while he's up here, because it doesn't look like the attackers are aware of his position. He can just hold on for another 30 seconds and perhaps gain some information as they push on through. A C4 doesn't do much. Ethan finds one kill on his flank, retakes back that exterior room. Well, Sweet Black looks like he's going to go and suss out Imarin's position. Oh, doesn't see him. <laughs> doesn't see him, so he's still in for a chance to be revived. No, I don't no. know, it's probably too gone no, too far happening. now. Yeah. Yeah. If only there was a dock on Orglis. If only Derpa had spawn peaked as Doc and then not died. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes that's a lot, lot to wish for. Finally, Nova's grenade. So nade. Yeah, there you go. Finishes off Emo Rin. He bleeds out. Two players lost for Orglis. But only one minute for Mantis to surmount their final push. Yeah, Joey really wants to be hum uh, jumping on his uh, pulse scanner here. But the, the presence of the and the pressure of the IQ really slowing him down. Two Mantis players that could potentially drop through this west side hatch on the stairs. Joey's still in sight. Nova wanting to push in from the east side. And Sweet Black still above. Joey C4 doesn't land its mark. And Nova starts pushing on inside. Yeah, Orgus need to be aware of this position. Otherwise, they're going to get completely flushed out. 20 seconds to go. Numbers advantage for Mantis. Could this be the final moments? 
Yeah, 15 seconds on the clock. Boy, that's gone fast. Oh, oh no! What? Nilio with a double team kill. That is so unfortunate. Sweet Black's going to find Ethan and Silex will finish off Nilio. Oh, but Sweet Black's going to find Silex turning into a one on one, but three seconds goes the pistol. And Joey's going to finish him off. What? What? How did that all start with a double team kill? <laughs> It was a four versus three. It Mandis with the numbers advantage, but not for much longer when Nelio kills two of his teammates. A horrible blunder, but <laughs> still the worst part was that while you were commentating, it got more exciting and it actually became possible for Mantis and then it was stolen away. We're still on match point. Wow. But Derpe now gets around to not spawn Peak and look, he's <laughs> probably... Yeah, he picks Rook. Yeah, that's a... Uh, you know, this re this matchup has delivered so many very exciting rounds, hasn't it? And team kills. Very exciting team kills as well. <laughs> this entire uh, this entire day, I should say. Look, Derpair on the Echo. He can still spawn pick with that if he wants, but at least he can also help out the team a little bit more as well. I really Look, think like Rook's the I ultimate spawn killer because like you can put your utility down and off you go. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, <laughs> do you, I think the most like stereotypical spawn peeker is Doc because you know he heals himself up and then goes peeking and then dies. <laughs> Doesn't put his barbed wire down. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sounds like something I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's exactly what I was going for, Monkey. <laughs> but no, I, I agree with you. You know, sometimes it's nice to just chuck down utility and and you can really talk about the uh, the echo even being the same potentially like for example we've got yeah you can um, put them yeah it's just cameras can't yeah, you yeah right and look i don't i don't want to talk too much about other teams but i do remember one match in particular yeah, i watched on bank sure. where uh, it was g2 playing kanto raketti was playing at you know kanto's spot he put his echo up next to kanto's spot it had such a good overview of lobby and he had also a good overview of the long hallway with a second yokai drone so much intel and he was going and peeking everything and look if he had died would have been the end of the world there's so much intel he's, he's still provided to the team yeah it's a very good point like you know you don't have to use every aspect of the utility that you're provided with but uh are we going to see overtime or are we going to uh, be hitting amanda's victory here dev i think it's still too close to call um yeah probably but <laughs> um but uh look I, I wouldn't say that the mantis mantis have slowed down it's, it's more of a question to set the scene yes i i know look I know. Cold, rainy night. <laughs> Orglis versus Mantis. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to imagine like a giant praying Mantis now, if you've seen the, the logo, but I can't really imagine it. There's no, you know, icon for Orglis. Bit, bit disappointing there. Top floor control, taken. Mute Jam is seen to be dealing with fairly easily. Nova got a grenade kill over this, uh, over this, this wall last time. This how he did it then, yeah. Yeah, he's been doing that quite a few rounds. I think mainly just to destroy the, uh, the Mute Jammers. It just worries me, like, the position he sits in. Like, if he misses it, he's going to kill himself. <laughs> yeah, well, we oh, saw no. one round where there was an accidental grenade. Uh, I believe it was on board. I oh, know it was actually, it was, it was by Nova uh, when he was in study. Almost, uh, almost bit himself. Yeah, when the maestro was shocking him, distracted that's, him. Yeah, that's the right one. Ethan does find the opening kill, though, so perhaps we are headed to overtime. Ethan wants to gain on this free roam. He takes down Nova. Yeah, he's had so much success on the Jaeger, hasn't he? There's going to be lots of drones coming on out, uh, checking out the statuary room, where the bomb site is. I don't think uh, we mentioned it. Yeah, stat. So um, this was won by Orglis last time they defended it, and they haven't yet lost it in this matchup on their defense. So looking good for Orglis, having the uh, having the history there and having that first opening kill despite even taking a bit of damage. Just playing time at the moment. Man, just only one minute left and still haven't managed to crack into the bomb site. Yeah, well, it's going to be a drone get, gathering some information. Emo Rune looks to be in a fairly strong spot at the back of astronomy here. Of course, a well-placed Sophia lifeline could really force him out of there. Nelio does have an opening into the bomb site, oh. but Imarin finds Envy Taylor. Nelio jumps right on inside. Still not taking out Derpe, spots it out with the Yokai. Can deny that for some time. But Hetty and Sweet Black each find their own kills. Still players in the other bomb site. The Yokai drone goes down. Sweet Black is taken out by Silex. Two players left for Mantis. That plant going down. But no longer as Silex takes him down. Silex finally felled himself. Just Hetty against two players of Orglis. Ran in the corner. He's going to be found and finished by Derpe. We've got over... Oh! Just testing. It's just testing. Ooh. It's just testing his keyboard. <laughs> We've got overtime, though, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he rubs it in a bit. Yeah, well, it's all right, Derpe, because, you know, you died in the first 10 seconds of the previous round. So. <laughs>
<laughs> Overtime, we are back, and it's going to be Mantis on the attack once again, continuing that half, uh, the pattern of that half. And look, it's been defensive favored so far, so a bit worrying for, uh, for Mantis. You know, we should call this matchup Postman Pat because it is delivering. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dev. That was good. <laughs> it was good. I just, like, didn't have a natural laugh for it. So <laughs> I had to, like, synthesize some for you. Wow, you'd think a guy that uh, broadcasted would be able to laugh convincingly. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just clearly not very good at my <laughs> job. <laughs> All right. Defending stat again. So we're back here. Same side. Orglis have won it twice now. It's been very convincing. What's Mantis has got to do to change this up? They've decided to go back to their roots and bring out the Blitz. The Blitz. Yeah, scary stuff. Yeah, it is scary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I remember it was one of the first teams that I ever saw really hammering that Blitz time and time again. On Oregon, they used it, you know, repetitively, and it worked out really well. Look at that derp there. going to try and put his... Um... Oh, oh I love that's it. nice. Just on the underside of the shelf. Thing. Yeah, I love it. So everyone looking for echo drones on the roof. Realize that B1 only at their shoulder height. The only thing that could spot that out was really an IQ, and you know what? No IQ. Yeah, they've traded that out for the other GSG9 sibling, the Blitz itself. Now, how would this Blitz be used to help Mantis on this bomb site? Like, I I don't really see how the Blitz is that effective. See, I'm kind of thinking right. They, you know where we saw them going for plant last round. If you just have a Monty or the, well, it's banned, of course, but a Blitz standing in front of it, that could just make that plant a bit easier. I definitely feel like in this scenario, this is when Mantis would be bringing out the Montane, but Orglis has banned it. So, look, perhaps that tiny little ban is everything that Orglis needs to keep this happening for their team. Mantis, instead having to use the Blitz instead of the Montane. We'll have to see how it works for them. All this roaming a lot more this round. This actually could play into Mantis's favor is all this are going to be more exposed to this roam hunting blitz. Here come that blitz. Surely they've heard him. They know there's a blitz around. You, you, you can hear that shield from a mile away. And well, a bit of damage done into his hands. Sweet Black. You know, that health is so very valuable when you're playing a blitz. Derper has eyes on this hallway and there's also a run out available from the end of Vault. Looks like the Echo Drone's gonna safely get on out of there as Hetty's engaging in towards... Oh, that's the Blitz going down as well. Derpe, successfully done. They don't need to worry about that blunt object anymore as Sox is gonna find Hetty as well. Five on three, this is going great for Orglis right now. Come Jack Train is steaming Sox, ahead. Stylix finds Nova now. Heavy Taylor starts the work back with two quick kills. But it's just him and Nelio to make this work for the team. Derpe has all the intel he needs onto that long hallway. And while they may have found two kills, they haven't found much ground at all. <laughs> Derpe just comes face to face with that drone. He was in a position to capitalize on Nelio, but uh, he was he was checking it. But he's really not worried about him getting flanked now, is he? Just look at this roam. I mean, August have one player downstairs. And two players no one on hiding. Side. No, no one on site. And Nelio has the diffuser. Nelio could just rotate to bomb site. Looks like, like this is really worrying for Orglis right now. What? They still there is no one on the bomb site. Maybe they forgot which bomb site they picked. But this is going to go Maybe down for free. Maybe they think they have diffuser. Is there an echo drone? It's coming, but uh, I think Envy Taylor might have seen it. Oh no! Ethan might be in the position. Might be in the power plate position. Nelio's but uh, oh, he's being trackled. Nilio's wasting time though, and he hasn't got this diffuser down yet. Ooh. Finally, Envy Taylor takes down Ema in his third for the round, and the bomb is down as well. Could Mantis claw back this round where Orglis has done so well? Derpe finds one kill, all up to Nilio in a one versus two, whips out the bearing nine. No ammo left in the Type 89. Goes for a reload. Now, time to reset. He's being spotted out on the evil eye. Where is this diffuser? Can he find this kill? Very small magazine in the Type 89. Needs to find this peak, and it's a prone player to find the kill. The Aussies have done it and taken another round, the first in overtime. Well, it was a five on two, and who was it? It was Envy... Uh, Envy Taylor and Nilio. Yeah, Envy Taylor and Nilio almost bringing it, clutching out the five on two, but uh, Derpe and Ethan able to finish it off there. Well, that was, uh, if you're Orglis, way too close. Way, way, way too close, but Mantis didn't manage to crack Statuary. They've lost it three times now. 
on their attacks haven't managed to pull ahead a win on that bomb site. Mantis need to successfully defend any bomb site they possibly can to send us into the final round of overtime. So far, Mantis has had a 100% success rate defending Aviator and Games Room, so they're going to be returning there. Back to AVG. The thing I'm worried about here is if Mantis do win this bomb site, all of us are going to have to, they're going to be locked out of statuary. So where they're going to go, Kitchen, they, which they've, they've had mixed. They've themselves. won Kitchen twice, but they also lost it at one point as well. Yeah. Mind you, they lost it the first time and then made it some adaptations and, and winning it. We're going to have a technical pause though, before we continue on through, before this second last round goes through. But honestly, I, I feel like we are heading to that last round of the match. I mean, I, I know- You say second last, it's not locked in as the second last, it could be the final. Yeah, it's true. Potentially second <laughs> Potentially. last. I mean, I feel like we're He's heading... already written the story in his head. I, I don't know, like... <laughs> Orglis were trying to defend a bomb site that they've successfully defended twice in a row, and they did it once again. They repeat. Yeah. They continued the pattern. Look, I've got to expect that Mass is also going to continue that pattern. What is... Okay, if not, humor me. Like, to say, let's say that's not going to happen. What is Orglis going to bring out that they're going to be able to crack Aviator in games room once and for all? Thatcher. <laughs> Thatcher, actually, that's a great thing. You know, I'd forgotten about Thatcher for yeah. like six rounds because it hasn't been relevant from the first half, but that's a great point. Like, well, I didn't manage to see the operator picks, but, you know, if we see a Thatcher caught out, maybe things will change. Maybe the story is going to improve a bit because yeah. we did see in the first half of Orglis, like, they started off, no offense to Orglis, that was a horrible start, yeah. but they, they got better. And then they started bringing out the Thatcher and things turned around. Of course, this is a defender side of map, though, but it's it's also their pick, their map choice, isn't it? If there's a time for August to, to close us out, it's right now. They don't want to send us to the last map. Uh, sorry, last round, uh, the final round of overtime. They oh, just yeah. want to they just want to do it here, and then move on and go play Clubhouse. It's going the full distance at the moment, and. Are you so what do you reckon? Is it going to be an Orglis victory or are we going to be finishing it here? What, what look, are you calling? Look, you know how if, if you if you flip a coin and you get five heads in a row, there is two times people, there's someone that says, oh, it's had been heads so many times, it'll be tails next. And then the people who are like, oh, it's, it's been heads five times, it's going to be heads again. <laughs> and do you get where I'm going yeah. with this? It's like, look, Mantis have won this bombsite two times. Surely they're going to win it again, but at the same time, it, it comes down to Orglis in my mind. Like, Mantis already have written out what they're going to do for this bomb site. It's going to come down to, can Orglis get over that hurdle that has been the clock just and just make things bomb. happen, take the initiative that they need to on the round? Well, here we go. Thatcher indeed. Joey G picking that bad boy up. It's like they're listening to us, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's just, just chilling in the background, sneaking into the studio. <laughs> well... I mean, one operator pick doesn't close out the round. It's certainly possible. And I certainly know that the Australians have so many fans backing them at the moment. Trying to, they really want a second Australian representative at an international event because so far, you know, we've only ever had one Australian New Zealand representative at an international land. For Japan, they've had two teams, the Irons and Nora have both been to international land events. Mantis is the only Korean team who have been to an international land, but if Orglis can make it all the way there, that'll seriously be something. Yeah, definitely be exciting times for uh, ANZ region. But Envy Taylor looks like he might be getting a bit aggressive on the peak there, but uh, looks like no one's going to round the corner into his crosshair. It's like the start of a roam on the, uh, on the north side. Not sure how long it'll last. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's something that we saw, uh, you know, Mantis, like, kind of half-heartedly do. Like, it, it would, as soon as the drones started coming in, they'd shoot the drones and fall back. Yeah, and it's it's a delaying time mechanic, and that's exactly what they did so well. Of course, Orglis took so long to make their pushes happen in the first half. We're hoping they can do a bit better this time around. Yeah, well, they've uh, spent 45 seconds, and they are in the building. I suppose that's not bad. Depper also cautious of any cameras, echo drones. We're seeing the double clamor again. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to ask him about this later because I honestly think someone around in the corner is just going to spot out both claymores and take him out. Well, I just honestly think, like, how are you going to get past that first one anyway? Uh, you can vault over and uh, and vault over that banister. Yeah, yeah, of course, like so, on water. Yeah, so I would put the second claymore on that on the banister. Anyhow. Maybe that's the plan, just Derp hasn't got the memo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So, looks like a fairly... Heavy Bomb anchor strategy from Jagger. Mantis. No doubt Envy Taylor are going to be holding that south stairs once again with a 
bucket load of lesion mines prevented the last minute push from Auglis so effectively. Flashing over the top, preventing an impact trick. It looks like it's going to work too. No one with impacts in the vicinity. Oh, as I say that, oh, but not Sweet Black enough. comes through and it doesn't do the job. Some low holes that Nova's gonna, now going to utilize onto L. He's definitely got a bit of a pixely peak there, but a uh, minute on the clock. This is great for Orglis in terms of their time management, of course. But now, what plays are they going to make? They're going to start doing stuff now. They've dealt with some of the initial issues, but now they've got players encircling the bomb site from all sides. Imarin trying to gain intel, and he wants to smack this window of study. Just needs to confirm that he's all clear. Opens up this window. But Sweet Black may be aware of his position, peeking it onto it. Envy Taylor with a double kill, and he's retaken L. This is the worst possible position for Orglis. Oh, and Envy Taylor free, could be a no! third one, but Ethan manages to topple that Tiger. Complete freebie of a kill, which is thrown away by Envy Taylor, to, you know, to his detriment, to his own life there. But it's still a three on four man advantage in Mantis's pocket with 15 seconds. Oh. Great shot from Neilio to eliminate Ethan there. All up to Emo Rin and Derpe, who don't seem to be very close to the side at all. Nilio with the C4 and Hedy to finish it off. 7-7, seven to seven, we're going all the way. I'd expect nothing less from these teams. Hedy to hold it in at the end there. August did so well there, so much better than they were doing in the first half, but they still didn't have enough to overcome Mantis's plays. Yeah, like they were trying to push players into study, but, uh, you know, they really hadn't droned that out yet. Like, it's... Yeah, well, and like that, that, was, that was why Emerin droned for himself, but the real highlight for me is the fact that that Envy Taylor was allowed to flank like that. I don't Did know he just prone through the Habana holes? That's what I'm assuming happened. Maybe, actually. Maybe he just sprinted through the hallway. Honestly, it's, it's something that should not have happened, but it did. All of us are going to be kicking themselves, but they need to keep their head in the game because this is the telling moment. They're defending Kitchen. They lost it the first time they tried, and they won it twice over afterwards. This man just going to even up that and can. take this entire map and entire series right here. Or is always going to cling on and send us over to Clubhouse? Well, oh, it's definitely been very tight between these two teams. So, um, I don't know. I, I really feel like, you know, we're at this point and we're being so critical of Orglis, but sometimes two top tier talent teams can be going at it blow for blow. And one team comes out on top doesn't mean the other team choked or the other team was just not playing as good. It's just that, that well, maybe it does, but it just means that one team has to win and one team has to lose. And, you know, when it's close like this, you can say, well, it could have been one or the other. That's the rule of the game. And, look, I believe you. I, I agree with you. Orglis have had some great plays. Some mistakes, but every team makes mistakes. The question is, can Orglis change things when they need to be changed and reinforce what they've been doing well, continue with it? They've had two successes on this bomb site. Surely they can scrape it away again. Yeah, statistics mean nothing, Dev. <laughs> yeah, to totally. Statistics don't tell you anything. <laughs> now, let's have a look how Mandis are going to take this. So far, not so much of a heavy presence on the top floor. 30 seconds subsided. Here you go, just figuring out the situation. Going to be droning into the bathroom and master bedroom shortly. His mute jam is slowing down the situation a little bit, as we've seen in the past. Oh, and there's Ethan to open things up. Envy Taylor's going to have to spend the rest of this game as a spectator. It's not going to have any impact on this round. It's on the cameras. I think it's a good start for Orglis. Certainly, I would never say no to having an extra man on the board relative to the enemy team. Still one minute down. Not a lot of progress for Mantis. They've cleared out Master. Now they've realized, okay, there oh. isn't... Oh, what? Nova's downed. From where? Was that a player through the floor? Uh, might oh, have the been. Joey's no, finished. He was down, but there's still a finish off. You can't, you know, complain too much about that, especially when he looked like he was about to get revived. They're having a whole lot of trouble here with Emo Rin, who just keeps throwing goo after goo after goo, and it looks like he might actually be thinking about getting aggressive onto the bathroom here. He's prone up right and close. Oh, oh is Hetty going to be expecting this one? Oh, Nelio's taken so much damage. Hetty's gone down. Derbe takes down Nelio. Are we going to map number three? Orglis, five versus one. What can Sweet Black do in this scenario? Can he spot out the first one to spray through the desk? Doesn't find anything. 
so much time to work with, but there's a mountain to climb. Well, 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 one minute, one v five. You know, if Sweet Black pulls this off right now, I'll eat my shoe. I think this might be Clubhouse, guys. Put on your makeup, get ready for your dancing tunes, because we must must be heading there. Hello. Never say never. There's the first one. Sweet Black, one on four. Sounds a lot more doable than one on five, doesn't it? Certainly does. Oh, what's this? Oh. <laughs> Ethan is taking a lot of damage already, but trying to put it to a one on three, which sounds <laughs> a lot more doable. Tempting fate, still 30, 30 seconds. seconds. That's half the time gone. He's gonna have to be some swift frags. What a flick onto Silex. The Echo Drone spotted out, 25 seconds. Just needs to concuss Sweet Black, I reckon. Just, oh, okay. They've called out his position. He's headed upstairs. He still has Diffuser. He can do as he will. 15. 15 seconds no left. time. Is he going to find this kill? Doesn't Actually, spot he sees the, the feet. Okay, there Ethan we go. Ethan finishes it off. Orglis win. Map number two of Villa. We're heading all the way to Clubhouse. Good attempt. Good attempt. Uh, I, I, you know, maybe I, I started to feel like, did I just cast this curse myself oh, here? No. But uh, is the one on five happening? But no, Ethan. We will shut it down in the end, and you know, the one on five has gone the way we kind of expected, hasn't it? Yes, and well, it was a very close-knit game. Haven't had us all the way to the very, very, very last rounds. Unfortunately, we don't have the full kill distribution due to the rehearsal.